The Fine Art of Mind Reading with Jonathan Pritchard, Understanding Consumer Behavior, and Dad's world-famous homemade chili. Stick around! Welcome to Business Edge Radio, the show that gives you tips, tricks, tools, and techniques about how to build a more profitable business, while at the same time creating your perfect lifestyle. It's a show about working less and living more. A few golden nuggets, a little bit of wisdom, and over 35 years of business experience to help you keep your edge. Lifestyle entrepreneur, best-selling author, internationally renowned business speaker, and daddy of three, Mitch Graff brings the heat with actionable techniques for building the business and lifestyle of your dreams. Now your host, Mitch Graff. Well, hello there, Unleashed Tribe, and welcome to yet another jam-packed edition of Business Edge Radio, the ultimate brainstorming session for your business and life. I am your mind-reading host, Mitch Graff, and on today's episode, I interview one of the world's top mind readers and mentalists, Jonathan Pritchard, about how his mind control techniques can help you with your interactions with people. We dive into how to understand consumer behavior and how we can use simple techniques to get people to do what we want. I review a book called The Magic of Tiny Business, and my recipe today is for Dad's world-famous homemade chili, so you better be sticking around for that magic. When you hear that word, what is immediately conjured up in your mind? Do you think of mystical powers of Harry Potter flying around playing Quidditch? Or witches on broomsticks? Do you think of magicians pulling rabbits out of hats? Or of potions being brewed up in a bubbly cauldron? In the modern day, we tend to think of people like Harry Houdini, David Copperfield, David Blaine, Chris Angel, Most of their magic and their illusions and their mind reading tricks seem to be almost impossible, yet we believe. Then there's the magical power of Christmas, of the Easter Bunny, of having your meatloaf not burn in the oven. We want to believe, and most of us do believe in magic. Believing in a mentalist's ability to tell what cards you're thinking and the superhuman ability of a top-notch salesperson to close more deals than his peers are very much rooted in the same set of skills. Whether you are in some form of sales, in customer service, in marketing, or a teacher, an ostrich trainer, a cat wrangler, a doctor, an engineer, or working as a bartender to pay your way through college, understanding your customer's needs and knowing how to meet those needs will put you light years ahead of the competition when it comes to understanding why people buy the things they do and what motivates them to choose one product over another. Understanding consumer behavior and what motivates people to make their buying decisions takes a bit of mind reading and of course a little bit of mind control as well in order to do it well. In fact, the best salespeople in any industry are masters at the fine art of subtle mind control and have made it a point to learn everything they can about human psychology, consumer behavior patterns, and of course, how to read other people in any situation. To begin with, a consumer's buying decision depends on the type of products that they need to buy. The behavior of a consumer while buying coffee is a lot different than buying a house or a car. It's determined by the level of involvement that a consumer shows towards a purchase decision. The amount of risk involved in purchase also determines the buying behavior. Higher priced goods tend to have higher risk, thereby seeking higher involvement in buying decisions. In fact, I went to town this morning to do a little banking and thought I would surprise my family with a coffee from the local drive-thru. I thought of the idea and 15 seconds later I was pulling into Dutch Bros with my on the fly order. A very quick decision indeed. On the other hand, I've been looking at buying some riverfront property somewhere for about two years, and I've been as slow as molasses in making the decision. Bigger dollar amounts, bigger risks, more things to consider. So let's talk about the different types of consumer buying behaviors. 
Do you remember when seemingly crazed parents flocked to shopping malls all across the country to snatch up their very own Furby? <laughs> that was back in 1998, and for no discernible reason, everyone wanted to get their hands on those little creepy furry robotic creatures. Though it might have seemed unreasonable, sense can be made from such a trend when you begin to investigate the types of consumer buying behaviors from a psychological perspective. Everybody had to have a Furby that holiday season, so a sort of herd mentality took over. Those who couldn't get their hands on the toy risked upsetting their children. After all, every other parent was almost certainly going to get their hands on one. The Furby craze is a perfect illustration of some of the things that go through consumers' heads while making decisions. While the parent isn't likely interested in the Furby per se, they are interested and heavily involved in the situation, which is delivering to their child the hottest holiday gift. This creates a perfect storm for trying to get something that is exclusive. And there's a lesson in there for all of us. When it comes to purchases that consumers are highly involved, like buying a car or planning a summer vacation, buyers weigh personal, social, and economic risks. Those risks carry more weight in decisions that are more visible or involve higher priced objects. There's four types of consumer buying behavior. The first one is a routine response. When you go to the grocery store and you grab a gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, a little treat for dessert, odds are you'll either buy the variety you're familiar with or the one that carries the lowest price tag. In these situations, products are essentially purchased without any significant thought at all. We're creatures of habit and we tend to stay in our comfort zones. My wife likes downy fabric softener because she says it smells better than any other one on the shelf. Even though you and I both know that the store brand is probably made by Downey and it's a lot less expensive. Number two, limited decision making. If you're in the market for some new office chair or a new pair of shoes or a new barbecue for your back deck, you might do a little research on brands, but odds are, unless you're a Jeff Bezos or a Mark Zuckerberg, you're going to go with what's in your budget and what seems to be the most practical. All right, number three is extensive decision making. Imagine you're a first time home buyer looking to settle into your first home with your new spouse with a baby on the way. You'd never bought a house before, but obviously you understand how big of an investment and how expansive a decision such a purchase is. It comes with a pretty significant economic risk. But how are you going to feel personally about the purchase? How are your peers going to look at you? Extensive decision making requires the most research before making a decision. And number four, impulsive buying. Ah, and this is my favorite. Consumers who buy something impulsively wake up that day without knowing they're going to spend money on any particular item. But all of a sudden, they're inspired for whatever reason, and they make a purchase. Like a neon orange pair of running shoes with neon green stripes, or an indoor microgreen greenhouse so you can grow microgreens for your family. Just as a couple of random examples from someone that I don't know. <laughs> Impulsive buying requires no conscious planning. I'm sure you can think of many times that you impulsively spent money on something that may or may not have added real value to your life long term, but it felt so good. Bottom line is everybody is different. It's important to remember, however, that these four types of behaviors are not universal in the sense that the gluten-free eater might spend a lot of time trying to figure out which loaf of bread to buy. In other words, what might be a routine purchase for one person can morph into an extensive decision-making purchase for another person. On the other hand, buying a new car might be an impulsive buying decision for someone like a Justin Timberlake who has seemingly all the money in the world. However, the regular consumer, buying a car is a once-in-a-decade decision. Now, let's take all this information, flip it backwards, and insert your product or service into the chart. Why do people make buying decisions to purchase from you? Are you the impulsive buy or one that requires a more elaborate approach? Once you figure that out and understand how different factors affect consumer behaviors, it becomes much easier to develop a marketing plan that addresses those behavior patterns and allows you to become mind reader extraordinaire. A little bit of know-how, a touch of understanding, and a pinch of magic is all you need. Too many of us feel trapped by work that keeps us from living our purpose. 
We fantasize about starting our own business, yet we're warned against falling into debt, working 80 hours a week, and coping with the pressures to grow. Well, my book review today is on the book, The Magic of Tiny Business. You don't have to go big to make a great living by Sharon Rowe. Like a tiny house, a tiny business is built on maintaining a laser focus on what is essential by living an intentional life. As an entrepreneur and a mother, Roe is most concerned with putting her family first, maintaining financial security, and doing something that makes an impact on the world. Using the success story of EcoBags product, which she started and grew into a multi-million dollar tiny business, Roe distills the step-by-step -step process of building a profitable, right-scaled, sustainable venture that doesn't compromise your values. She shows you how to test your concept, manage your money and your priorities, while staying true to the tiny ethos. In a world that seems to exhort get big and get out mentality, especially in business, Sharon Rowe's book has a different message. Go small, not just small, go tiny. In the same way the tiny house movement pushes for efficiencies, so too does the tiny business model. By eliminating non-essentials, it's possible to live and work more purposefully. The Magic of Tiny Business is a story of how the author took her own tiny idea and made it into a multi-million dollar business by staying true to her laser-focused principles. We all want a livelihood that fulfills us and that gives us the freedom and gives us meaning. In some cases, staying tiny is the way to succeed in that endeavor. The size of the business is not the consideration here. Rather, it's the owner's mindset. A business can be wildly successful and still laser-focused and efficient. While the book is anecdotal and not an exclusive all-you-need-to-know-about-business book, it is a great quick read with useful exercises for tiny business owners. Tiny is a mindset. It's not about size. Like a tiny house where there's limited space for stuff, a tiny business requires that you examine, prioritize, and work with what you value, eliminating what you don't. It's a perfect example of the 80-20 rule that we discuss here from time to time. The magic of tiny business is a breath of fresh air for business owners and entrepreneurs who aren't willing to compromise their personal values in favor of growth and maximizing profits. She offers simple rules such as set a hard 9 to 5 workday schedule, no work on weekends or assigned days off, make family events a priority, don't miss a school play, schedule self-care like exercise and meditation with the same priority as work and view every problem as an opportunity. The Magic of Tiny Business shows readers how to have the life they want without compromising values or sanity. You can find this book as well as many, many other great reads at powermarketing101.com slash hotlist. That's powermarketing101.com slash hotlist. Hi there, this is Mitch Graff, the host of Business Edge Radio. Would you do me a couple of very big favors? First, I invite you to subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes. This will help other forward thinkers just like you discover the show. Second, I ask that you share the show on your social media platforms. And third, I would love it if you connected with us on social at Unleashed Tribe on Facebook and Instagram, or log on to powermarketing101.com to find more great resources. If you could do this for me, you would be a superhero in my book, and I would be eternally grateful. Hello, Unleashed Tribe. I am so honored to have you as a loyal listener, and I'm very excited to tell you about the Business Edge radio app, now available on Apple and Android devices. You can catch up on past episodes, watch short videos of the Business Edge Minute, our 60-second show that gives you quick and easy tips on building a better business and living a better life and you'll get access to bonus materials that are only available on the app. In fact, I have a nice little PDF bonus waiting for you there right now. Plus, you can email the show, call the show, connect with us on social, check out our website, and even make a nice fluffy omelet. No, you can't really do that. Just go to the iTunes Store or Google Play Store, and you can download the Business Edge Radio app so you can be one of the cool kids on your block. Business Edge Radio, the ultimate brainstorming session for your business and life. Now available in the App Store. Download it today. And if you don't, I'll come visit you on your day off.
Fans of Business Edge Radio, I have a very special treat for you. As you know, I love barbecuing and making up an excuse to get myself outdoors. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with Barbecue Nation. They make incredible sauces and rubs and spices and meat shredders and grill scrapers and lots more. And they're offering a deal for our listeners. Check out bbqnation.net. And when you place an order for any of their products, you'll receive a 20% discount off your order when you enter the word EDGE at checkout. Looking for a magnet that lists your cooking temperatures or different types of smoking woods? They got that. Need a heavy-duty set of meat shredders for your pulled pork or shredded chicken sliders? They got that too. Or my favorite is their Magic Dust Everything Rub that will spice up just about any dish. Log on to bbqnation.net. That's bbqnation.net today. And when you enter the code EDGE at checkout, you'll receive a 20% discount just because you hang out with us on the show. Barbecue Nation, get your grill on. If you know anything about me, you know that I love my early mornings and I really love a good cup of fresh roasted coffee. There's nothing better than getting started before the rest of the world with a good cup of joe. That's why I'm so excited to have Mountain Creek Coffee as a partner. The process is so simple. You order, they roast, they ship, you enjoy. They don't roast your beans until an order is placed, which guarantees the absolute freshest coffee that you can get. Check out their artisan dark roast, medium roast, or decaf beans at mtncreekcoffee.com. And when you put in the code EDGE at checkout, you will receive 20% off your first order. I prefer the dark roast because of its full body and bold flavor. You order, they roast, they ship, you enjoy. Log on to mtncreekcoffee.com and enter the code EDGE at checkout and you will receive a 20% discount off your first order. Pretty cool stuff. Mountain Creek Coffee and Business Edge Radio, a partnership brewed out of the love of coffee. See what I did right there? In today's business world, it's vitally important that you understand what I call the seven pillars of business success, which are lifestyle design, time management, branding, sales, marketing, pricing, and social media. Regardless of what industry you're in, and whether you have a brick and mortar or are only online, having a solid foundation in these skill sets will set you up for success down the road. And to personally help you with your journey, I've written a book called The Business Basics Bootcamp, The Ultimate Crash Course, now available on Amazon.com and from other fine bookstores. And it'll give you a 30,000 foot view on these topics and many more. It'll help you slow down just a little bit so that you can get your business house in order and get your creative juices up flowing. Log on to Amazon.com today and get your copy of Business Basics Bootcamp, The Ultimate Crash Course. You can search my name, Mitch Graff, or search the title of the book. In the dog-eat-dog -dog world of business success, the weak will perish and the strong will survive. Which will you be? We've all heard it said before that the best lessons learned are from the School of Hard Knocks. This prestigious university has some of the best alumni in the world, and the curriculum is more difficult than Stanford Medical School. You can't apply for admission, and you don't get to pick your classes. Well, now you can give the gift of a PhD from this prestigious university. This authentic diploma is printed on the same high-quality paper that the top schools in the world use for their diplomas and comes with an official gold foil seal that will look great framed in any room. This PhD degree will become the center of conversation. Get one for your spouse, for your boss, for your parent. Give them the gift that money can't buy today. When you place your order at schoolofhardknocks.net, you'll receive a special discount of 20% at checkout when you enter the code EDGE. Once again, 20% off your first order when you use the code EDGE at checkout. schoolofhardknocks.net. That's schoolofhardknocks.net. Get one for that person in your life who seems to have everything. Or heck, get one for yourself. You've earned it. My interview today is going a little bit outside the box, which is something I'm known to do from time to time. My guest is a professional mentalist and magician who has mesmerized crowds all over the world with his unique style of mind reading and thought control. He's entertained troops overseas, performed on Vegas main stages, appeared on national TV shows like Penn and Teller's Fool Us and America's Got Talent as well as for many Fortune 500 companies all over the country. He realized that he could do more good for the world if he helps companies and entrepreneurs make massive change on a fundamental level in order to improve the employee experience, customer experience, and the world in general. He truly believes that to improve yourself is to improve the world once you accept the responsibility of owning your own success. 
which is why he's on a mission to help people transform their thinking and create a life they've never dreamed was possible. Well, today we pull up the curtains and give you a behind the scenes look at how the psychology that he uses on stage to get people to think he can read their mind is exactly the same psychology that drives effective communication, influence, negotiation, and sales. He's the author of the book, Think Like a Mind Reader. And you can check out his podcast, Mind Reader University, on all major platforms. And you can learn more about him at mindreaderuniversity.com. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? (laughs) I thought so. Please enjoy my in-depth discussion with the incredible Jonathan Pritchard. Well, Jonathan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and it's an honor to be able to share my thoughts. Appreciate being here. This is going to be some fun. So my first question for you is, when I was a kid, I learned some magic trips, some card tricks, and a couple Mm -hmm. of illusions, and I used to do these shows for my mom and dad. Uh I have a 13-year-old son now that, since he's been five or six, he's done the same thing, and he works hard. He, He watches YouTube. He reads. He practices. He comes. He does these shows. I grew out of my face and did other things in my life. My mm-hmm. son has kind of forgotten about it. You've been doing this for most of your adult life. When did you get your start? Did you used to do shows in front of your mom and dad? Oh, yes. And <laughs> and they were as saintly as you've been with your son. <laughs> because with without them encouraging me and going, oh, yeah, that was great. Well, I saw, I saw you flash the card here, so you can make it better by doing this and giving me that kind of loving feedback. Without that, I probably would have put it down too, but there's just been something about it. it. It's just, to me, the most fascinating and interesting thing I could ever spend my time doing. Yeah, it was just a childhood interest and has grown into a, a whole career. A 25-year career. So when did you start? When was your first, I'll call it, paying gig? Yeah, so the, the first paying gig was the summer of my 13th year on the planet. <laughs> so I was 13 years old. I got paid $200 to are you serious do some magic tricks absolutely absolutely so a 13 year old kid getting paid 200 bucks to go do some magic tricks in the sun like yeah that's that's a good gig so i i had some ridiculously strong positive reinforcement on that front and i thought (laughs) wait a minute i could make money just doing this all right i'm i'm going to be very, very unemployable for the rest of my life. (laughs) It's been the polar opposite, actually. So tell me by definition, by your definition, what is a mentalist? A mentalist is a type of magician who has specialized in mind reading tricks. So I don't do tricks with tigers or big boxes. Uh, I don't float across the Grand Canyon. It's mostly I specialize in making audiences think that I could read minds, predict the future, influence people's decisions. And it's basically all centered around human psychology. And it's funny because people are going to be asking, well, what, what is Mitch having a mentalist on his show for? It's Business Edge Radio. But I actually think in the broader picture, consumer behaviors and customer decisions and how they react to the world and how we make our decisions on what to buy is influenced by, I'll call it mind control and planting seeds of motivation in brains, whether we see an ad or a magazine or we hear someone's voice. And you're Mm -hmm. much in the same industry where you are planting seeds and you're cultivating and you are learning about people's behavior. I'll interpret that as consumer behavior. So Mm -hmm. how does what you do translate into learning more about how a customer makes their decisions and, and how they react to situations? That that's exactly it, because every business is trying to understand how their clients and customers and potential customers are thinking, what their problems are, what their worries are. So as a business owner, you're trying to answer all of those unspoken questions and and worries. And magicians and mentalists, well, we've been getting inside the head of our audience since before written history. So all these business gurus talking about consumer psychology, negotiation psychology, the business, right? All of that, it's all predicated on developments in the past 50 years, maybe. So I would think that an eons old tradition about human psychology 
has a thing or two to say about good design thinking, designing a, a good promotional strategy. It's all just human psychology. That's all it is. So I, I often tell people that the mind reading show is applied psychology, showmanship, and moxie, just having the gumption to do this stuff. And all of what I use on stage as a communicator, as a performer, directly applies to the sales process, negotiation, delivery, customer management, the whole nine yards. Any place that your business deals with a human being, I could help. On the robot side, automation, zero help. <laughs> so don't, <laughs> don't come to me for that. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I mean, from sales, marketing, effective communication, influence, negotiation, mm -hmm. and just about every other part of business, what you do can have applications in those fields, for sure. Uh, as, a, as a parent, we are always playing mind games with our kids in order to convince them to clean their room, eat their veggies, do their homework. Homework these days is a little different than it used to be six months ago. Right. Are there some ways that we can be better at for lack of a better term, tricking them and controlling their mind to, to get them to do what we want. Are there some tips and tricks that we can do? Well, there's, there's the light side and the dark side. I, I do like to call myself the professor of dark arts sometimes, but, <laughs> but those skills uh, aren't for me to share over the open airwaves. <laughs> but really, the, the most powerful way to influence somebody is to show them you actually care and to actually connect, listen to what it is that they're saying, and come to a mutual understanding about what the situation is, what everybody's hopes, dreams, desired outcomes are. And it really takes a lot of communication skills to, to make that connection. So there really isn't a quick, easy, wave your hand and they are now complying and they're under your control. It, it's a lot what? more work than that. You can't, maybe, you can't wave a magic wand and make this happen? What? Well, if you could, <laughs> I would be out of a job. That's right. That's right. So what made you transition focus from performing into coaching? Because I know that you love the stage, but you also do a lot of that corporate Fortune 500 coaching. What mm -hmm. was it that made you want to do some transferring into that field? It was one of those things that I, I couldn't see it because I was so close to it kind of things in that I performed at colleges for about 10 years and college students would come up to me after shows and go, man, I can't even imagine how you do what you do. And they meant that in two ways. The first being, I can't imagine how these tricks work. And the second is, I can't imagine how in the world you make a living just traveling <laughs> around doing tricks. Like I don't, I don't get it because I grew up as a poor kid. My, my dad worked factories like working 14 hour days on his feet at a door skin factory, my mom secretary. So I'm not coming for money. We lived in a single wide trailer, literally on a dirt road in the mountains of North Carolina. So I don't, I don't come from money. I don't come from world travelers, but to now have that be my career, that's a pretty amazing development. So people were wondering how in the world did you get there? And that's really when I realized that the applied psychology techniques that I use during my performance are also the exact same processes I've used on myself in my life to think about opportunity to pitch opportunities to big companies. And it works. Yeah. So I, I was just thinking about how when people were telling me two years later, hey, thanks for having that talk with me after your show. It really meant a lot. Here's what I've been doing afterwards. That's when I saw the value of the way I think about things based on my experience. So I realized that companies need to know this stuff in order to be more effective at what they do to make the world a better place. So who's going to book a mind reader trickster to, to educate their million dollar company? Yeah, I need to be a consultant. I need to be an author. I need to present what I know in a valuable way so that these Fortune 500 companies can appreciate it. So that's why I started the international consulting company. Now that's a good point. When I look back at, at times in my life that I've sat in the audience of a mentalist or of an illusionist or a magician, there are certain things that I still remember to this day. 
-hmm. My son, who's now 13, will tell me when he sat in the audience at the county fair and they did something to him that absolutely blew him away. And he spent the last several years trying to figure it out and he can't, yeah. but he'll tell that story. That exactly. moment in time was transformational and it happens to people at my age, people at my son's age, people at any age. And you do, you can affect them right there at that moment. And five years from then, they're going to remember how you affected their lives. And in sales and in marketing and in customer service, those same dynamics are at play, aren't they? And yes. if you go to the intensive sales workshops and conventions, you learn that you must be a better listener than you are a talker. God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. We're supposed to listen more. And I think a lot of times, especially modern day sales, we forget that. We get so busy mm -hmm. talking, 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 instead of, like you say, just listening and trying to meet the customer's need and caring about them, showing that we actually care more than just for the check they're going to write us for the product or service that we sell. We actually care about who they are, what they do, and how their future is going to be affected by what it is that we have to sell. Exactly. And, and to that point of your son five years later still telling the same story, oh, to me, that's I get sick of that story, but man, right, it's right, a good story. Right. It's a good story. But it's great. It's great at cocktail parties, right? <laughs> exactly. But, exactly. but the, that experience is the spoonful of sugar. The marketing message is the medicine. So that's kind of one of the secret weapons that I am for my clients, because at trade shows, that's my job is to draw an audience, entertain them for 12 minutes with a lot of fun. And during that performance, my script is custom written to deliver my clients top three filtering questions or details or whatever it is they need to communicate to their ideal clients. Now, at the end of that presentation, we've pre-qualified the best people out of that audience. And now I can send three or four times as many qualified leads to the sales team. But everybody that saw that experience is going to remember that company for the next five, 10 years. And they might see you 10 years from now and they're going to remember, hey, you're that guy. I remember I've, you. <laughs> I've literally had that happen because I lived in Orlando for a while and I would do walk around mind reading at this really cool restaurant that had painters and balloon twisters. I was the, the house mind reader. A year later, I'm in Kentucky and a woman walks up to me and says, are, are you from Orlando? I was like, I'm not, but I think I know why you're asking. Were you at a restaurant? She was like, honey, it is him. <laughs> Brought her husband over. It was like, look, we still have that playing card that you signed that oh. it's four states away, 1,500 miles a year later. And they recognized me out of the blue. That's transformational. Like, That's great. That, that's brand awareness, right? Like <laughs> companies would dream of having that. Well, that's, that's why I'm their secret weapon. So when you're doing that 12 minutes, it's succinct. You know exactly what you're going to say. You pretty much know the audience's reaction, give or take 10%, right? Mm -hmm. Have you always been that at going? I mean, you're, you're, you're out there and you're entertaining, you're funny, you're energetic, you're interacting with people in the audience that have never met you and you've never met them before. Were you always that outgoing or did you have to kind of grow into the skin? I definitely had to grow into it. I am still intensely introverted. I love being alone, spending days talking to nobody else but my fiance. I love that. It's just that I don't get paid when I do that. So <laughs> learning outgoing behaviors have helped me achieve everything I've I've wanted to do in life. And it's great for networking. It's great for business. And also it's a great way to meet really cool people. So if I just did what felt most comfortable to me, I would live in a basement and my life would be miserable. So <laughs> I've learned how to be outgoing and to connect with humans. And, and through the world of performing, I've become a professional people meter. So much in the same way that you're sick and tired of, of hearing your kid's magic story, my fiance is, has heard my shtick <laughs> about meeting new people in exactly the same way. So I, I definitely have had the conversation like, look, this is the first time this stranger is hearing this right. shtick. Right. It's great to them. This is my script for meeting people. And if you sabotage that, 
well, you're undermining my ability to connect with human beings and that's just not cool. So you've really, <laughs> you've got to have a, a team effort of buy-in on, you know what, this is just a great way to meet people. Here's what works. Here's what we do. And it, it is a script. And when you've been in that dynamic a thousand times, you get really good at knowing what's going to work, what's not going to work, what's a little different in this instance. And, and those kind of insights don't come any other way than live performing again and again and again yep. and again for decades. That's right. And it's funny because you say you're kind of a, a hermit and you like to be around no people. Well, my whole career, I've been in front of people and I've traveled the world kind of like you have, talking to groups, and that's just been what I've done for a living. But when I'm not working, I grab a pole or I sit on my back deck or I dive into a, a chair with a, with a magazine and I love my kids, but there's times I got to have nobody around me. I mean, that's that's what recharges my batteries. Mm -hmm. And my wife has called me a hermit. If it wasn't for me having to make a living, you know, now I've kind of pivoted. I'm, I make my living many ways. I have other businesses, but I talk into a mic and I write things on paper that become a book. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. I can do that from a computer in Nowheresville, Montana. And in fact, I've done that before. <laughs> so I think when you're a creative person and when you're in front of people like you are so much, you need that downtime, don't you? Just to kind of recharge, mm -hmm. get the proper perspective and to to make sure that your ducks in a row and to make sure that your priorities are set and that uh, you're, you're moving forward, the engine's going forward. Exactly. I think about it like breathing. There's time to breathe in, there's time to breathe out. Nice to have a cycle and a flow between those two. And, and one thing I never wanted to have happen is to believe my own promo of being that rock star public figure that gets applause at work and oh yeah life is great so when you're out on the road you get that rock star mentality you're like all oh, right i'm i'm amazing and then you come home and you're like yeah yeah yeah, take out the trash <laughs> don't you know i'm a rock star reality right, check so, <laughs> exactly it's just it's really important to keep my feet on the ground and and being bored is a part of that you know just just taking time to myself without having to be on without having to be that dancing monkey to entertain somebody. And also to understand that I don't have to be that dancing monkey in order to connect with people. When I'm, when I'm in my everyday life, man, I don't tell people that I'm a mentalist or a performer. It's like, I'm a business consultant. They're, oh, they're going to want you to perform, right? They're going to want you, oh, exactly. really? Do a trick, do something for me, right? Exactly. And then, and then, I've set the precedent that the only way I know how to connect and relate with human beings is, is through being that dancing monkey. And that's, that's just not a, a nice category to fit yourself into. Not at all. You had mentioned doing things thousands of times and remembering that it's the first time that your customer or your audience is hearing this. Your fiance has heard it a million times. You've heard it a million times, but you have to give it with that same oomph and pizzazz as you did the very first time. What I see in the world is whether it be a, a bottom end employee, and when I, when I say bottom end, those are the most important people, I think, in our economy mm -hmm. because they are carrying the livelihood of the brand that they work for, whether it be a gas attendant, a, a checker, um, a service attendant, a telemarketing person. They are the front line of the brand awareness and the brand creation or the brand breakdown. Mm -hmm. And they hear the same thing over and over again from their bosses. Therefore, they have to repeat it. After a while, it gets a little bit old saying the same kind of things. You have the advantage of being able to talk in front of an audience and, and you feed off that energy. What can you recommend to someone that has been doing a sales job or a customer service job forever? They're sick and tired of the script. They're sick and tired of the same thing. They've said it a million times. What can you recommend to them to keep that same energy level up when they're making their presentations? I'm never sick and tired of what works. Bingo. <laughs> if if you're That's using right. a client or a lead to entertain you, that is a fundamentally wrong way of thinking about it. They're not there to make you feel better. They're not there to alleviate your boredom. You are there to serve them and to figure out how you could help them make their life better that's your job and you know what a script is a script because it works 
actors don't wing it on stage. Like multi-million dollar movies, they're not just making stuff up. Every single word is written by an expert to be behaved out in time by an actor. So to me, one of the, the coolest ways that I've seen that happen is at Disney. I was I worked at Disney as the college internship program. And Disney gives you the authority to solve problems. And here are the common problems that you're going to run into. And here are the ways that you're empowered to solve them. Here's what to say, here's what to do. And now you're just on script. You don't have to think of anything. You recognize the problem and you know how to solve it. To me, that's awesome. I, I, I don't really have a lot of patience for people who are going, well, this is boring. This is awful. I, this, I, you're not in the right line of work then. Go, go somewhere else. Change jobs. That's right. I agree exactly. with you there. So why do people have such a hard time making changes in your opinion? There's a lot packed into that question, man. The part of it is that people do what works for them. And sometimes the problems you have are working for you. They're comfortable. You know what the consequences are. It gives you a sense of purpose. Uh, there's, there's a lot of ways to make problems, quote unquote, work for you to get sympathy, to, to know that other people are caring because they took the time to commiserate with you. So there, there are effective and not so effective strategies that still work in some way. So it might be that the way things are awful are great for people. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> one way for it. So why change what already works? Well, even we, if we it's get in bad? comfort zones. We get into these routines and we don't like right. change. As as humans, we don't like change. We drive the same way to work. We go to the same grocery stores. We have the same basic get up time and go to sleep time. We eat the same right. breakfast kind of and we don't like too much that asks us to get outside that comfort zone. So right. it's well, it's human nature. It, yeah. And part of it is our brains work off 12 to 15 watts of energy. That's not a lot of energy to go around. So we're going to have to have some shortcuts. So it is, it is energy expensive to do new things. So in a way, it's inefficient to do new things in a different way to mix it up. Oh, I'd so, be so bored doing the same things over and over. I tell you right now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. But in some ways they, they work, but if they yep. don't, it's important to change. Another angle to that though, is think about it. We've got fear, anger, disgust, uh, anxiety, and happiness. Kind of like four out of those five are negative. <laughs> so, so to change something, it's four to one more likely to be awful than happy. So the happy has to be at least four times more than the potential negative in order for it to be a thing that we want to entertain doing. Something worth so, taking a risk over. Right. So we as humans are way more concerned about losing what we already have than gaining something that we don't. So the risk to reward, the reward has to be way out of line, even if what we already have is awful. So that is a very strong, very strong aversion to any kind of change because we're way more likely to lose in a change than we are to win. That's interesting. I like that. So I've noticed that you have a black belt in Kung Fu. You've been doing martial arts for many, many years. What made you want to get into that in your early 30s? And is there anything from Kung Fu that you apply to your, your mentalist career? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the quick answer. The, the long answer is I was married at one point, got fat, got divorced, got fatter, my car had been repossessed twice, uh, once on my then girlfriend's birthday. Uh, so everything wasn't going great. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was in that environment where I found martial arts. And, and at least I could practice my Kung Fu the on choreography, right? That's right. I was like, <laughs> I don't care how broke I am. I don't care how miserable. I can at least guarantee myself okay, at least do your Kung Fu today. <laughs> and having that personal accountability, that routine, 
that that plan of action, that's really what started to help me pull out of that no dive. So that was the the system that I had to to pull my life out of the gutter. And it's it's been phenomenally valuable in that way. Oh, that's great. Tell me about your experience with the phenomenal James Randi and tell us what he's famous for. Yeah. Oh, man. James Randi is one of the single most important people in my life. And if I ever achieve any sort of success, I will owe it directly to to his his mentorship. And he he's been super famous through time as a, a professional skeptic of a con- anybody a contrarian claims, right <laughs> yeah so what well, he really all he really did was was ask people who claimed to have supernatural powers to demonstrate those powers and That's prove it really all he's yep. ever done exactly prove it in a way that doesn't allow for trickery and i'll believe you I'll give you a million dollars. How about that? If you could actually read minds, predict the future, whatever, without being able to to trick your way into it. Oh yeah, because uh, I'm an old school magician and I know all the ways to, to trick your way into these things. So if you don't do any of that and you can prove that you actually have the mojo, which is what you claim to do, then you get a million dollars. And he would make people go through the paces and he had controls in place. I mean, there's videos on YouTube. You can watch them where people say, I have this special psychic power and he has every kind of, every kind of a, a border on their efforts and every kind of a restriction so that they can't cheat, that they can't engage somebody from the audience. And it's absolutely right. amazing there, watching some of that stuff. Yeah, there's a really subtle distinction to make, which is, those those borders in place are solely for trickery methods. If they were actually psychic, those those preventative measures would offer zero problem. That's true. So so it's not that he was actively trying to stop them from being psychic. He was actively trying to prevent them from tricking their way into apparently doing the same thing as being psychic. So that's a really, really important distinction, which is that if you actually were psychic and you said, yeah, I could just straight up read minds, you go, would this, pre- would this cause a problem? And, and now they know that you're on to them. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> the, the, yeah. And, yeah. What, and what was your interaction with him? What was your involvement with him? Well, I was in college for painting and he came to the, to the college to do a lecture on the, the psychology of, of science and skepticism. And his background is as a magician. So I was like, oh, I have to meet this guy. So we basically just hung out for two days. It was awesome. And I just realized the opportunity and said, hey, do you need any help at the foundation that you've got in Fort Lauderdale, a mile off the beach where I could come hang out for the summer? Yeah, sure. You're hired. Wow. So, <laughs> oh wow! So I went to, to go live at the foundation every summer in college and I helped handle the applications for that million dollar challenge. And how many did and, you get a year? How many of those applications came in? Oh man, we, we got about one a week at least. Oh gosh. Yeah. What a great was, experience for you. What an opportunity to do something you never really could you never could have written a job description for that position. You never exactly. could exactly. <laughs> and if I had waited for him to invite me, he never would have. That's right. You were proactive. So it's it's having the gumption to imagine a way that you could provide value and then ask for the sale. Like that, <laughs> that was it, man. Man, how simple whole, of a lesson is thing. that? We all can learn a lesson there, right? All right, Jonathan Pritchard, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is steak. And what's your favorite sports team? Oh, it's okay I don't to say one, one of the it's okay to say one of the Chicago teams. It's okay. Yeah, I we have I listeners in Chicago. You don't have one? I don't watch sports. I don't follow it okay. at all. Just say Los I Angeles play. Dodgers. Just say that. We're fine. Ooh, I I can't put anything <laughs> like that on record without, and what's without your knowing favorite? what I'm signing up for. <laughs> what's your favorite hobby? <laughs> My favorite hobby yeah. is uh, probably martial arts, painting, um, thinking. <laughs> all right. Jonathan Pritchard, what am I thinking right now? Ooh, I, I am flattered, but I do have a fiancé who I am, I'm dedicated to, but I appreciate your interest. I'm, th- 
it. <laughs> Touche. I'm actually thinking that I could spend two more hours chatting with you, but that our time is up. So thank you so much for spending time on Business Hedge Radio. Good luck with the future, and uh, we'll see you down the road. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Wow. What a fascinating chat with a man who has taken a childhood hobby and turned it into an international sensation. While we were talking, it reminded me of how important it is that we continuously open our ears and hearts to our customers. There's a very specific reason that we have two ears and only one mouth. Listening to what customers are really saying about what they want can give us insights into how they think, and that is helpful in just about every industry. I highly recommend you check out his book, Think Like a Mind Reader, which you can find at powermarketing101.com slash hotlist. And you can connect with Jonathan Pritchard at mindreaderuniversity.com. Hi there. This is Mitch Graff, the host of Business Edge Radio. Would you do me a couple of very big favors? First, I invite you to subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes. This will help other forward thinkers just like you discover the show. Second, I ask that you share the show on your social media platforms. And third, I would love it if you connected with us on social at Unleashed Tribe on Facebook and Instagram, or log on to powermarketing101.com to find more great resources. If you could do this for me, you would be a superhero in my book, and I would be eternally grateful. Hello, Unleashed Tribe. I am so honored to have you as a loyal listener, and I'm very excited to tell you about the Business Edge radio app, now available on Apple and Android devices. You can catch up on past episodes, watch short videos of the Business Edge Minute, our 60-second show that gives you quick and easy tips on building a better business and living a better life. And you'll get access to bonus materials that are only available on the app. In fact, I have a nice little PDF bonus waiting for you there right now. Plus, you can email the show, call the show, connect with us on social, check out our website, and even make a nice fluffy omelet. No, you can't really do that. Just go to the iTunes Store or Google Play Store, and you can download the Business Edge Radio app so you can be one of the cool kids on your block. Business Edge Radio, the ultimate brainstorming session for your business and life. Now available in the App Store. Download it today. And if you don't, I'll come visit you on your day off. Fans of Business Edge Radio, I have a very special treat for you. As you know, I love barbecuing and making up an excuse to get myself outdoors. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with Barbecue Nation. They make incredible sauces and rubs and spices and meat shredders and grill scrapers and lots more. And they're offering a deal for our listeners. Check out bbqnation.net. And when you place an order for any of their products, you'll receive a 20% discount off your order when you enter the word EDGE at checkout. Looking for a magnet that lists your cooking temperatures or different types of smoking woods? They got that. Need a heavy-duty set of meat shredders for your pulled pork or shredded chicken sliders? They got that too. Or my favorite is their Magic Dust Everything Rub that will spice up just about any dish. Log on to bbqnation.net. That's bbqnation.net today. And when you enter the code EDGE at checkout, you'll receive a 20% discount just because you hang out with us on the show. Barbecue Nation, get your grill on. If you know anything about me, you know that I love my early mornings and I really love a good cup of fresh roasted coffee. There's nothing better than getting started before the rest of the world with a good cup of joe. That's why I'm so excited to have Mountain Creek Coffee as a partner. The process is so simple. You order, they roast, they ship, you enjoy. They don't roast your beans until an order is placed, which guarantees the absolute freshest coffee that you can get. Check out their artisan dark roast, medium roast, or decaf beans at mtncreekcoffee.com. And when you put in the code EDGE at checkout, you will receive 20% off your first order. I prefer the dark roast because of its full body and bold flavor. You order, they roast, they ship, you enjoy. Log on to mtncreekcoffee.com and enter the code EDGE at checkout and you will receive a 20% discount off your first order. Pretty cool stuff. Mountain Creek Coffee and Business Edge Radio, a partnership brewed out of the love of coffee. See what I did right there? In today's business world, it's vitally important that you understand what I call the seven pillars of business success, which are lifestyle design, time management, branding, sales, marketing, pricing, and social media. 
Regardless of what industry you're in, and whether you have a brick and mortar or are only online, having a solid foundation in these skill sets will set you up for success down the road. And to personally help you with your journey, I've written a book called The Business Basics Bootcamp, The Ultimate Crash Course, now available on Amazon.com and from other fine bookstores. And it'll give you a 30,000 foot view on these topics and many more. It'll help you slow down just a little bit so that you can get your business house in order and get your creative juices up flowing. Log on to Amazon.com today and get your copy of Business Basics Bootcamp, The Ultimate Crash Course. You can search my name, Mitch Graff, or search the title of the book. In the dog-eat-dog world of business success, the weak will perish and the strong will survive. Which will you be? Time for Cooking Corner with Mitch. When I was growing up, my dad would make up batches of his world-famous homemade chili, and we'd take it with us hunting or fishing or gold panning in the high desert in the Sierra Nevadas. It was magical to me back then, and it still is now. To this day, whenever I smell chili cooking, it takes me back to when I was young, hanging out with my dad. Well, I lost my dad earlier this year, but one of the joys that he instilled in me was the love of a really, really good chili. So today, we're making up a batch of dad's world-famous homemade chili that is great as a side dish, as a covering on hot dogs or sausages, or as a complete meal. To begin with, as always, turn on some good music, get yourself a beverage of your choice, and join me in the kitchen. The original chili recipes were from northern Mexico and southern Texas. And chili is actually short for chili con carne, simply meaning chili with meat. Usually in a spicy stew containing chili peppers, sometimes just chili powder, meat, typically beef, and often tomatoes and beans. To start, dice up a medium onion and brown it in a medium pot. Once it's a nice golden brown, Add one and a half cups of beef broth. Or if you want to make this a vegetarian version, one and a half cups of veggie broth. Add two and a half tablespoons of chili powder, two tablespoons of ground cumin, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one and a half tablespoons of salt, a half tablespoon of black pepper, one can of diced tomatoes, 16 ounces of beans, and you can use pinto beans, black beans, white beans, or any other variety that suits your fancy, and one cup of tomato sauce. Turn your pot to simmer and give all the ingredients time to get to know each other and for the flavors to release into the chili. A good chili is like a good spaghetti sauce. The more time you leave it on the stove, the more flavorful it becomes. Now you can serve it like this, because this is a complete recipe, or you can add yourself a pound of ground hamburger, ground turkey, chicken, chunks of beef, venison, or any other type of meat that you prefer. If you want to kick up the Scoville unit just a little bit in your chili, add a couple tablespoons of cayenne pepper to the pot. I like to let my chili cook three to four hours so that the flavors are completely developed, and I like to bake a fresh pan of cornbread to go along with it. Add some diced onions and some sharp cheddar cheese on top, and you are ready to rock it. (laughs) There's nothing better on a lazy Saturday afternoon than a pot of chili cooking on the back burner, cornbread in the oven. Give it a try. Let me know how this one turns out. Well, that will do it for this magical edition of Business Edge Radio. My parting shot today is this. I don't believe in the kind of magic in my books. But I do believe something very magical can happen when you read a good book. J.K. Rowling Until next time, this is Mitch Graff reminding you to live every day like it's a Saturday and to live with passion. I'll catch you later.
Thanks for hanging out with Business Edge Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to subscribe, rate, and review. Then hop on over to www.mitchcraft.com to get even more meat and potatoes. We also invite you to follow the show at facebook.com slash unleashed tribe the most valuable asset that any of us has is our time and we thank you for choosing to spend some of your precious time with us 